caring, and, and if it can be done with a machine. You are so right about that. I always try to teach my kids, I'm like, if you're going to get somebody for something that you really love them, do something that's done with your hands. Right. Like, if you were going to buy somebody the fanciest gift or make them something. Yeah. Not everybody has time for you. Okay. I'm very blessed that I was raised very poor, so if I wanted to do something, it would make something. You had to build it with your hands. Something nice, you better find it. Lifetime experience. My favorite bike I had was a dumpster bike. Found all the parts out back behind bike shops. Not stolen, like trash. Found rims and went and bought spokes. People always say that for it. We lived on a farm and took care of it all. Like 1,280 pistachio trees when I was little for $600 a month. Place the park at Camper Trailer. I shouldn't have said that on the live. I'm kidding. I'm very. My house is a house of learned men and scholars. <laughs> oh, TikTok. How are you guys? Well, when you come to the mountain, you'll see that I have 60 stained glass, and there's rainbows that change every day all over the house. My grandkids lay on the floor and have contests. So so cool. How many grandkids have you got? The most rainbow. How many grandkids do you have? Uh, I have seven and two great grandkids. Oh, shoot. That is awesome. Yes, yes, it is. That's part of life. These right two there. little princesses with their dresses. Do you have two little princesses? I have two little princesses. Yes, I do. I'm taking some of our old white. I'm only going to do a linear pattern on this. I'm not going to have any on just mine. You guys do what you want. I look better if it looked like mine. Um, I'm going to do all a very straight pattern using some of that white. Meaning I don't want a bunch of stripes all over on my piece anyways. I want some really faint, just brushed in white. Lengthwise in my piece. I want this to look very decorative, almost like a little bit of wood graining in here. You can use a brush or a stick or anything. Try doing some really straight lines in there. Let them just settle and we can even torch them to get them to settle. You don't have to brush them in or roll them in or anything like that. Just make sure you don't have little U-turns where you stop before the end. And God made the rocks, you have plenty of material. What is? Arrowhead, where I live on a mountain. Really? Yeah. Dang it, I love Telluride for the looks. I just don't like the hmm. the way it's turning in for the people. That's right. I used to go uh, there like 10 times every mountain. summer, and now it's like a... The mountain's pretty cool, it hasn't done. I love their transportation big time. That's just, you can't, that's the funnest place to take kids, to ride gondolas all day. Just. What is their transportation? Just the gondola up and over the mountain. Uh -huh. Well, as of Monday, I'm uh -huh. going to be snowmobiling for the next six months. That's how right. I was born in the Pyrenees cabin. in front of me. You should see that. People take pictures. Really? That's yeah, she's is. so big. I'm like this. Yeah, they're a snowmobile, and she right. loves the snowmobile. Since we get yes, you can. I'm spreading all my colors first, though, because I want a really good pattern. So I put my um, charcoal and all my charcoal color down okay. and then I put my white spread all my white in there and I'm trying to get a really linear kind of natural pattern going I want it almost like a wood grain in here that's just what I'm doing to mine Time to kind of escape that metallic powder that we mixed in. 
and you'll get a way smoother piece without blurring or burning it. Just remember, you're better to torch twice than once and burn. Take your cavity case, let that air, the epoxy soften, let the air come to the top. You notice I poured right over my initial piece. I could have poured it clear and just put my accents in it if I wanted. To add to what I just had, I do a lot of multi-stage pours where I do really pretty much all stuff. I got you a new one because I know that that's the old <clears throat> alcohol. Large speckles of kind of a diluted gold. I didn't mix it too much. Down into the center, you can kind of look at what I'm trying to do. I want to create a really simplistic, metallic, broken up look. Probably gonna do less than more. Walk away from it. I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the building where I'm gonna show you all the different products and you're gonna hopefully it'll make a little more sense about what we're gonna do tomorrow you guys have no idea to be here sometimes we're struggling to get to this point right now where we have three samples down and it'll be like 4 30 and there's messes there's been four fires there's a pile of epoxy on the floor a crying person me usually just me is this alcohol after you did yep i'm um, just large droplets of alcohol down here i'm just wanting to break this leave it really natural okay. Gold after that? Yeah, it just did gold. And I'm just going to do a little bit of trans green. Um, what's in the spray? 99% isopropyl alcohol and our mica powders. For our accents, what we have to find. I'll, I'll try to get some someday for you. That really makes it special. Now I'm doing a lot of droplets because I really want fractured veining, but if you see what layers and layers of droplets do, I've done this on countertops and look at what it's given it. When that dries out, that's going to be very clean and very easy to, it's really divoted from alcohol, but the only thing that made all those veins so fractured is just lots of little droplets and some gold and so some. So just keep layering. Uh -huh. Really? If you go too far with one of your colors, remember you have charcoal spray. It's the same exact powder as your charcoal you mixed in. So you could, if you sprayed too much gold, you could spray charcoal to kind of fix it. So you should be able to have fun without any kind of fear of catching something. Does it harden there? See that? You found a heart? Yeah, it's almost like a... I have my little girl like at the picture. office before I left and she had all these little really cute rock hearts all around doing one on my table. Yeah, we, we paint rocks for people. I painted rocks with a bunch of kids and it was fun. Mine were all uglier than the kids' rock. My grandson, he has to make presents. Really good, but your hands are all too evenly spaced. Um, Not more of like... <laughs> Did I put too much? Uh, yeah, like. Cranky from the sperm bank showed us. <laughs> and he's, that's a heart. That's a weird smashed white penis. It's, a, it's like a corgi booty. Clearly. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. So more like this on the veins. I love her veins. I love that, yeah. So more like hers. Gotcha. And in order to get those spots, that's the alcohol. Now only practice randomness, guys. I see a lot of you guys got your veins really good, but they're very like every four inches or two inches. Right here. Laquisha, sorry, Ashley. Um, <laughs> Ashley, the sample, very natural right here. That's, Ooh, I mean, just oh random. Wow. Just like, it's same as Enyas. There you go. Enyas? Inas. Inas. I want to say your name right. Inas. Inas. Inas is enough. Yes, exactly. Yes. Inas exactly. is a badass. You have to that doesn't quite rhyme. Where do we what are you doing? There might be some over here. What are you looking for? I love it. You want more white? You might. I'll try to get. I'll try to scrape some up for you. I'll see what I can. That all that color has up. So just remember guys, I know I've said this a few times, but I know we rely on a lot. All these colors, that's 99% isopropyl alcohol mixed with color. That's not just color. That's powdered color mixed with 99. Hey, don't worry. We'll polish yours and see if we fix that. Is that true? I think you got your nickname. I love mine. Yes. Okay. After every color, do you put alcohol? No. I don't put it. You just put color. Now you want the green? We got through that. Yeah, so you got you like All right. If any of you guys want, we'll go on a building tour. Yeah. I'm coming with you. I can't pass the camera. I gotta ask you. I'm um, alive. Oh. Hey, will you introduce yourself in front of your art? Will I introduce myself? Yeah. yeah. We have somebody special in class, and she carves art. I'll, I'll go over here and fuck off with color for you. You can just go talk to people. Yeah, talk, talk so much. Go tell them what you did to the art right there. Hi, my name is Jerry Baffa, and I'm a wood carver and a marble carver. And these are... Uh, pieces that come from a lot of experience and wonderful wood. This is thousand-year-old wood. And this one is going to be a bar. A bar? Oh, you're doing, that's what this is going to be. Is this a bar at your house? This, no, I've got to sell it. Just so you guys know, Jerry is an amazing lady who came here to class like a month and a half, two months ago. She has no idea what an amazing artist she is or just a person. So definitely, if you come to class where you get to meet people like her and see, this is just another project that we have somebody like her that brings in. It's so amazing. So and if you come here, you get to expand your art because you have a wonderful teacher here who isn't afraid to share with other artists. I try my best. And so I that's love really a wonderful thing. That's beautiful. Well, we'll figure out how to feel that. Seeing this. there's nobody here and it's just us, I never carved anything before in my life. And Don't be afraid I lost to hit that love button, guys. In the service, and I had a dream after he died that I was to carve. Oh, and I didn't do it for a very long time because I thought I'd fail. Did you do a lot of this to help deal with the yes. stress and depression? And you did amazing. And I. Uh, I spent nine years just carving for people who lost children when they That's volunteered amazing. because it helped people heal. Well, thank you, Jerry. <laughs> I don't but know how many no, no. Well, thank you for being here. <laughs> well, thank you for. And I need to learn. I am in this class because I have discovered I've done a lot of videos, um, a lot of study, and the best teacher that I could find was Levi and Michael. And we really need to, um, I need to learn from them so that I can expand what I'm doing and learn how to do a deep pour on this. And so hopefully. You know, all we'll have to worry about is some of your sealing. You did so well on this. And like, I'm gonna help you seal this stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll brush a really thin coat on here and then it'll expose this, this, this. Stuff like this. It's gonna be the prettiest piece you've ever. This is amazing. No, no. Well, we'll show you guys after we're done. We'll show you what she does. With but this. I need, I need guidance on well, this piece so I don't mess it up. Don't worry. I think. Who wants to do a quick building tour?
Okay. Only if you want to. And I'll help you. I love, We're not really good I love wood. It lives. Marble. Yeah. Not today. Yeah, you can take the gloves off. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm here. Yeah, no more epoxy today. Just fun and answering questions. So we made a whole list at lunch. Right? Wait till the classroom portion. It'll, it'll surprise you. Obviously, you can see I cooked a big lunch out here. And I never cleaned it. And this is the stuff we're going to walk this up. This is our outdoor super track um, coating system. This was very filled concrete. We had huge expansion joints that were all through the whole slab. They were cut about every six feet, so it's pretty more common than most slabs. And we had to overgrind all of them um, and fill them in with an epoxy slurry. It's something I'm going to go over the details of how to do this, but this is a very solid, very durable bulletproof system that's stronger than new concrete and it can go on totally failed concrete. So, so a lot of times when you have completely failed slabs, this is a much cheaper option. We get stuck in a lot of situations where somebody calls us and they say, hey, I just got a quote for like 8 to 15 bucks a square foot to tear out and replace my concrete. And, and it's still not working. I still have concrete. And we can come in like this was completely failed and flown. And this is everything you do. See, everything here was on my students. So there's some failures and I'm happy to see them. And I, we let people do all their failures here. We have people from all over come coding companies and stuff. So grind this slab, we grind our highs, seal our lows. We'll show you how to draw up moisture um, and how to do any kind of aggregate coating. You could make this decorative from there or more of an aggregate like this. So super track, kind of a simple self-explanatory system. And I'll show you our tables and our floors. Sorry, this table's not completed. This boardroom table, uh, we poured and we're re-pouring it, and I just poured a really hot mix down, and I haven't put the vinyl down, and then I'm gonna put a clear over the top of it. Um, but this is gonna be our boardroom table. Um, six sheets, sheets of MDF, three thick. Um, glue and screw every single set, um, set, so you never wanna put all three with glue and then try to screw through them all. Make sure that when your screws create separation, you actually over countersink them and pull the sheets together. Um, really making sure your, client, your sheets are glued and screwed is important because the glue is going to hold that bond better than any screw, but make sure your screws are about every 12 inches throughout your piece. You should try to stack everything, have it upside down so all your screw holes are on the bottom, flip it back over, you have a really clean, easy piece to work with. Something like this, I, all I did was put two sheets down, cut a sheet in half, Put the ends at the end and a large one in the center to span that and then just did two full sheets on the top so we're back for one seam on the final so just staggering my seams i don't biscuit joint i don't do anything crazy like that the epoxy itself like i say you can join any wood it's very durable the floor you're walking on this was all poured over tile so everything in here what you're walking in here was a concrete floor and then it transitioned out here into a tile grid system Sorry about that. It transitioned out here into a tile grid system I left a lot of failures. I like seeing stuff like this. I know it's not something on a job that would be very sad, but I love it. This should be here every day. This happens when you pour a really nice floor, but during your prep, you don't grind quite far enough down. There was walls all in here. There was three offices here, an office here, a doorway there. This was all a wall. And I love leaving stuff like this. We come back and we degloss it, and all of a sudden it exposed, but we sand it too far because we hadn't sanded far enough on our prep day. So little things like this. Very easy to avoid, but very easy to happen if we're lazy. So, so all, all in all, the crew that did this office, it was just a class, probably like 30 people, and they did an amazing job. They'd never worked with flooring epoxy. Here it went um, about 1.75, so almost two inches, an inch and three quarters to here. It was a little different from each side, but that's a crazy step down. If I don't know how many of you have done floors, but that's like two tile floors higher there than here or more. Um, and all I do is I mix my I'll show you, tell you in detail, but I mix one of our flooring epoxies, a very specific and simple way with 20-minute um, um, drywall, like hot mud, but just the powder, and you can volumize it, make an amazing, really fast curing, hard setting, no moisture in it, slurry, 
pour our slurries on all our transitions, pour our slurry into all our tile grout lines. So here was all these 24 inch tiles through the whole building that you could just remove because it was all computers in these hallways um, and, and vents to blow through the floor. So very, very um, tedious to remove or do anything else, but we were able to just grout everything in with that and a wall epoxy on the large vents, and then we just poured our flooring epoxy. So we have about 20 layers over here, so be careful, you might have to step up a few feet. <laughs> The wall epoxy that I missed, that is our wall epoxy and our true metal copper right there. The plastic, this is my little boy, helped me do this. Uh, all I did is I found an old frame that had been like returned at Hobby Lobby, and we figured out the size and traced it, and me and my boy trawled the epoxy in here and then just glued the frame around it. Um, we did polish this and we sanded this from 400 all the way through 5,000. So this is what sanded and polished wall epoxy can look like. So you could do your shower, trowel it out, it could look kind of rough like this end of this wall down here. You can have trowel marks in it. You can polish it. That's nice if you need to. This is excessive, so make sure your customers, if you're running a high polish, I never ever bid for a high polish. They have to, something like this, they'd have to know this is a unique system. I mean, you could be polishing one shower for three days, something like this. So, you know, and you'd have to wait in between, but it is capable and we've been doing it lately. We have a lot of art you see with the wall epoxy, and that's, we have a really cool instructor that taught, I guess, for some Bob Ross art school and, and, um, so he comes in, these are some of his very first pieces he's ever done with wall epoxy, so, and all our colors look really pretty. Here's our a dealer that gave us, no, I built that. A dealer did this one. This was from my daughter's graduation. This table, uh, a waterfall table here. Um, simple, it's not perfect, but it was done by a class, and I'm very impressed with them. I think they did a good job. For somebody to build this for their first time, that's, I, I'm very impressed. Don't be impressed with the sink. I did do an undermount. Um, wood sink and I should have just left it a little bit longer and just square. I think my idea of a drain board is one of the dumbest things. So you see I smeared wall epoxy on it. I was so disappointed I just never finished it. So we'll see what I decide to do with this is someday. this epoxy too? Um, no, that's just rusted paint. Just because I had all these huge bump outs if you see them all over. Um, I had a lot of pillars and beams in here. This building was horribly disgusting. This building, you guys would never believe. If you saw this building two years ago, you guys wouldn't have walked in here without gloves and a mask. And this was like totally ready to be condemned. You'd fall through the floor. And so yeah. that's what you do with epoxy. It's cheaper than any other fucking remodel in the world that you could ever do. So um, with tempered glass, that's like seven years old, painted on a few more of the wall pieces. I have a large casting yeah, in case you can look at in my office if you want. I hope my office is clean though. You guys are welcome in here. Oh, yes. So, yeah, this is our kind of, this is my little girl's rock garden. She left me. I love this. I play those rocks on the table. And, yes, I was cutting armor on the table. So, you see where we were actually cutting with Kevlar cutters. Um, and I don't care. I want to cut into this table as much as we can so we can sand and polish it. A lot of people want to get into casting. This is all inert um, Hollywood prop ammo and weapons, but it, they were all real functioning at one time. So this is a very realistic, you know, with your RPG and AKs and ARs and whatnot. Um, you have 50 cal brass, 762, um, 556, um, totally all inert, nothing's loaded. Uh, this table weighs about a thousand pounds. Um, there's about $7,500 worth of items in it. The items, I don't want to say the names of them. Um, and there's about 110 gallons of resin here. So if you think about 110 gallons of resin and $7,500 worth of products, a lot of people mm -hmm. see this and they're like, oh, I should build tables like this. And, and if you really want to just throw 17,000 down and, and pour a table, or you probably do this for 10,000 if you're really thoughtful and careful, maybe 12,000, you know, who's gonna buy it? Maybe, maybe somebody would buy it right away, but most likely somebody would look at this table and say, oh, awesome, I own Black Rifle Coffee. Can you do me a table with these things and with this logo? And you're gonna be like, would you like to buy my table? No, we don't want your table. We need one that's 12 feet long and this wide. It fits in my room. So I'm usually kind of careful. I think casting, you should get into casting a few pieces, charcuterie boards, maybe one nice table so you can show people I know how to cast a table. Not to mention, you run into, and we'll go over a lot of these details during class, but you run into a lot of um, challenges to casting a real piece that you never run into on a little charcuterie board. Here's my desk here. This is another Infinity Edge um, desk. I am all poured seamlessly. We let the um, epoxy exotherm a little too hot in here and look at all the fractures off the object. Oh, yeah. 
So that's what happens when you let epoxy get 200, 250 degrees, and it cures in a molecularly expanded form, just like ice when it cools, it expands, epoxy when it gets hot, it expands like most other materials. So you have to think about that, it expands on a non-movable object, like a log in here, well then it, it cures, it starts setting, but it's really rubbery, almost like a solidifying gelatin. For, you've seen that before, right? And it's like gelling up. I just saw it last week. Yeah, and it starts cooling, and then the cracks will start in it. And uh, I've done this on, on accident here, and I did it on, I gave away the, my next piece I was gonna show you where we made my mom a really cool cut. My mom, that, she's healthy now, but she did have very bad cancer, and I sent her, I was like, I put all this time into this piece, I thought it was gonna be the coolest piece in the world, and it weighed like 100 pounds, so. She sat on her desk and it sat on her porch for four months or whatever. But we heated the epoxy up there at 450 degrees and cured it at 450. So it left, it, it cured the casting really thick, super expanded. And then as soon as we um, let it start cooling down, we took a five in one and we just cut it like every two or three, four inches randomly. And so it cooled and left like these tiger stripe cuts all through it. And then we just poured purple epoxy in there and sanded it off, planed it. It was really it was the neatest fractured top I've ever seen. And because we, cut those relief fractures in it while it was soft it never warped the wood or anything it just it laid just perfectly but really understanding like seeing that is almost good one time because nobody really understands a lot of people want to casting they'll have a casting piece and they see an air bubble and they're like i just hit it with a torch once we never hit casting with a torch because it's all about controlling that temperature like that that epoxy out there was really very thin I mean, it's a very thick for an epoxy but still compared to a casting is very thin so it'll that that um, heat that it picked up during the mix is just gonna get taken right back out of it on that surface. Whereas this here, once you get this to say 120, you're never getting that temp back down. It, it's gonna cook, you're gonna be 300 degrees, it's gonna cure, it's gonna maybe even yellow if it gets hotter, you know, you're gonna have issues. So definitely casting something I say, like get in too slow, really make sure you have your P's and Q's figured out. Like if you go to Reynolds over here that, where they cast like four foot thick, um, like glass walls that are 20 feet tall for like SeaWorld for the for the for the exhibit of whales or whatever. Um, I've watched them cast it and they have glycol liquid to liquid transfer lines in all their panels and, and they have like 50 thermometers across that whole panel and they're constantly pumping fluid through to cool those zones. So so if people see epoxy and they see a torch, they get all excited and they start burning shit all the time. So definitely no torches and, and think about the cost. This here, the thinness of it made it about half the cost of that just because of the thickness of it and the fact that I have a $2,000 piece of wood or a $1,500 piece versus $7,500. So, and think this was half as thick as that RPG sitting on top of grass. Does, does the density of what you're casting change temp and a little, a little bit, and yes, because it can absorb so much that you can, you can have a way greater exotherm than people expect. So I've seen people absorb so much into their project they don't even know what's happening to their temperature, but their piece is picking up. So I'm really into sealing and then controlling my volume, like exactly how much I actually cast after that. So and that's my kids, and there's my last job. So but I hope you guys learn as much as you can. And here's steaks for Thanksgiving. Put a bunch of tomahawks. So I hope I make somebody happy. Um, someone did ask how you would, how do you keep the epoxy from yelling, yellowing as it ages? Um, we stay away from white spheres and excessive exterior UV exposure. And as long as you follow those few rules, you usually should never have yellowing. So usually yellowing comes from either really large clears and, and we have more UV stability in our product than most resins anyways. But like I say, a lot of people don't know that they shouldn't pour whites and clears and direct UV exposure. So if you stay away from that, you're going to be avoiding a ton of your problems right there off of that. So that's a good question. Man. Thank you. And can the flooring handle heavy traffic? Very heavy. I mean, I've, I've done burnouts on the floor in a 700 horsepower truck and left like five pounds of rubber and, and had the xylene and sand and polished my floor back out of my other shop. So. 
I think the very first thing I did in that office, when I did the floors, the very first set of floors in my other office, it has one big entry bay and one big exit bay, and I did a donut all the way in one side and out the other with my kids to show them the new buildings. <laughs> And people would be like, "Can I? Ha what happens if my dog walks on it?" I'm like, "Pretty sure it's not. It's gonna be more gentle than what I just did." Yeah. All right, guys. I know I'm just messing around for no reason whatsoever. I didn't expect. Um, thank you guys for today. We showed it. We're done 56 minutes early, which is pretty good. Um, let's be all right on time at 9 a.m. tomorrow uh, for class. We're gonna have a really good class. It's gonna get into a lot more walls and floors, and then we're gonna get into sanding and a ton of tech stuff on Wednesday. So I, th I know these classes, sometimes it seems like I'm not getting to certain questions, but I wanna have a really good foundation so you guys aren't re-asking every question. I don't, I'm not the best communicator, so I'll do my best. Are you gonna do tubs? Uh, we might be able to do a tub. I have such an ugly tub out there that I can't imagine, I can't, can't make it any worse, so we may as well pour some shit on it, right? We may as well dump some stuff. Michael kind of fixed it. it looked, before Michael fixed that tub, the, the shit you see there, you should have seen it before I did that, before he fi finished it. It actually was perfect, but somebody wanted to see something weird, so I tried it and it ruined my perfect tub. So. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back here at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Don't, don't worry, Jerry, that'll come right out tomorrow. You don't have to clean anything. Just leave that down. Everything that's like wet right now will just get hard. Tomorrow, if you come in here, just organize your samples. They're all yours to take home. Don't stack stuff on top of it. Let everything harden separate if you can. You can even stack them like vertically underneath the table, more like books or put them in there. But just keep your protect your samples. They're all yours to take. And just peel any drips and stuff off your table and get all ready to pour again. We will still be doing some samples like this, but we'll also probably be doing some wall and a few other really fun things. So... Thank you guys for your time today. I know this was a small class and it was fast.